Hello everyone, I'm Beth Duncan. I design and build new innovative tools for fiber artists and many of you have been requesting a video of my wool combs and hackle combination in action and that's what we're here today to show you. The diameter of the fiber determines which size comb we want to use. For a fine wool, we want a fine comb. For a medium wool, we will use a medium comb. For coarse wool, we will use a coarse comb. While testing my combs, it occurred to me one day that it really isn't necessary to use two of the same combs. And there might be some benefits to using two different size combs. This would also eliminate the expense involved in purchasing a set of mini combs, a set of medium style combs, a set of coarse combs. My mission in my business has been from the beginning to create ergonomic multitasking tools for fiber artists to make the job quicker, easier, and as comfortable as possible. These are the reasons that I've designed the comb system to work in this fashion and I'll show you that now. The Pixie Claws come with a stationary base. This base has stationary blocks that the two comb handles fit easily over and the comb handles then are pegged to the stationary blocks to hold them in place while combing. All we want to do is make sure that the pegs don't protrude through the front side so that we don't catch the tines on the pegs as we're combing. So we push the pegs back flush to the front. And now we will decide which tine heads to attach to the comb handles. I'd like to start with the fine combs. What I have here is just some loose washed alpaca and since it's a fine wool, I want to use a fine comb. But in conjunction with the fine comb, I'm going to use the medium comb also. We will start by attaching the fine tine head to one of the comb handles using the two stainless steel screws provided. Simply line up the screws with the handles, set the tine head on the handle, And it's quite simple, it just takes a Phillips head screwdriver and we don't want to over tighten the screws just till they're snug. Now the idea I have is that in using a fine fiber the use of a medium sized tine head with the fine tine head will give us a little more flexibility in our first pass with the combs. The leather pads on the stationary block will protect the base while it's being clamped to your table and many different styles of clamps could work depending on your table. I have two different clamps here today. This is a squeeze clamp or a spring clamp. You can use C clamps, bar clamps, any type of clamp that you can find at your local hardware store that will secure them to your table. Clamps are not provided with the wool combs. I leave that up to your discretion and your personal tables. All right, once, once we have the uh, stationary block clamped to the table, I will now start loading one comb with the fiber. In this case, since we're working with a fine wool, I'm going to start by loading the fiber onto the finer comb. The reason is that the closer spacing on the fine tines will hold 
the fiber a little better than the medium comb for starters. Now typically you will load your combs about halfway up. You don't want to completely load the comb to the top or you will have difficulty in the combing process. So about halfway up the tines is about the maximum amount of fiber that you want to load at one time. For demonstration purposes I'm going to stop at this point. Now what I want to do once the fiber is loaded is simply take it and lift it up the tines a bit so that it's not all bogged down in the bottom. And with the pixie claws there are a few different ways that you can use the combs themselves. Now the first way that you can use the combs is to remove the pegs completely. Remove the combs from their base and the, the idea is to transfer this wool onto this comb. And we don't want to dig too deeply. We just want to start in just with the tips, making sure that we don't put this wool back onto this comb. I can use the combs manually in this fashion. Or I can place my loaded comb on the stationary base, peg it to the base, and use the other comb to pull the wool off this way. Now using the combs this way also you don't have to switch combs. Once all of the wool is transferred to this comb I can leave this in place and just transfer this back onto this comb. Depending on the fiber we're combing, the concept is that the smaller, more closely spaced tines will get a good grip on your wool. Coming in on the first pass with the medium tines, particularly if you've got any crimp, will open your locks a bit more gently than if we were taking another fine comb through it. It just sort of gets the process started a little more gently. It's, and it's easier on the tines. I do grind points on the tines, but I dull the tips so that in the event that a tine gets out of place in this manner, could be even in the middle of the comb. If any tine gets out of place, you will not need a tine straightener to get it back where it needs to be. You can take your fingers and manipulate it back into place. No need for tetanus shots. <laughs> no injury to oneself. And we will just continue taking this wool off of the loaded comb. All right. Now, at this point, I will hold the, the wool up to a light where I can see through it. And if you can see, I've got neps, you know, a few bits of things here that I still want to remove. So, what is left on this comb at this point is going to be considered waste. And most of you won't waste it. You'll find another use for it. But for our combed top, we won't want that in there. So leaving the fine tine head in place, now I will transfer from the medium comb back to the fine comb. And obviously the fine comb is now going to do an even finer job of combing out the bits that we don't want. Now, I can use my fingers on these tines to balance the comb and just simply transfer it back to the fine comb. You will use as many passes as are needed until you have your desired result. And that will depend on the fleece. If you have an excessively dirty fleece, you will need more passes with the combs. But I find that with most, most of the fibers I work with, 
I really only need two passes and I'm satisfied. I've gotten all the nips and all the VM removed and I'm ready to diz the wool from the comb. The next step in the process is to diz the wool from the comb. This is a diz and as most of you know a diz is generally a tool, any sort of a tool with a hole in it that we're going to pull the fiber through. I designed this particular diz so that it fits comfortably in our hands. It has four different hole positions depending on your yarn diameter, your finished yarn diameter. If you're spinning a fine yarn, you will diz through the smallest hole. If you're spinning a bulky yarn, you will want to diz it off through the larger hole. So that just depends on what your finished product is going to be. This is the diz threader, and this allows us to pull just a bit of fiber through the hole to get the process started. We want to keep the concave side of the diz toward the wool. And we will come in in our preferred hole with the threader and just pick up a bit of the wool. Set the threader aside and then using a push and pull motion in this fashion and working back and forth from side to side across the combs and from top to bottom, we will begin to remove the wool. Now, if your disc gets bogged like that, you haven't drafted it out enough, so you'll want to just come back and, and draft it out a bit. That's a term that most of you spinners will be familiar with. until you have all the wool pulled from the comb. And then what we have here is combed top. And this is ready to go to your spinning wheels or your spindles. It's ready to be spun. Moving on to a medium fiber, I will simply remove the fine tine head and use the two screws that come from it to attach the coarse tine head. So for combing my medium fleece, I'm going to use the medium size tine head and the coarse tine head. And the same principles apply as with the fine wool. I'm going to load the medium comb first because it will get a better grip, a tighter grip on the wool. Now, you don't have to leave your loaded comb in the stationary position on your first pass either. As I said, there are many different ways that you can use your pixie claws. I can put the empty comb down and peg it down. If this is, more, if this is a more comfortable procedure, you can do it this way. You can also experiment with your combs. You use, different, use different combinations of these tine heads. The next thing I would like to show you is another tool that I've designed. And this is a wonderful tool for opening locks such as Wensleydale, which is what this is. When we have long curly locks that we want to comb, it is always a good idea to flick them or open them before loading them onto the combs. And here's a good reason why. If you'll notice, if I if I simply loaded this on to the comb, the first the first pass if these locks aren't opened is going to put excessive stress on the tines. And we want to avoid that if possible, especially if they're really tight and curly like these smaller ones here. So this is called the Pixie Lock Picker. And this is designed to strap around your wrist and be used as a hands-free means of opening your locks. It's also a multitasker. It's not just for use with combs, whether you're lock spinning, carding, combing, Anytime you need to open curly locks, just loosely open them. This is just a hands-free little flicker. You don't have to poke your fingers. You can use it right at your wheel and see what we've got there. Just gently opens the locks. You can flick it. 
you can actually drag through and comb it if that's what you prefer. You can use this tool in a number of ways also. Then I'm going to just turn the lock over and flick the other end of it. And I would suggest that if you're, again, if you're using locks, coarse locks, long curly locks such as Winsleydale, that you pre-open them a bit before you load them onto the combs. So again, here we have a coarse wool and I'm going to use the coarse tine head and the medium tine head. I'm going to lash on to the meat to the smaller comb so that it holds my fiber better for the first pass through. The Velcro straps on a lock picker are adjustable. So one size fits all. You can also strap them to something else. I, I have many customers who like to strap them to their drum carters. And use them while they're carding their fibers. You don't have to get them completely open. Just enough that they're a little fluffed. Again, to re reduce excessive stress on your comb tines. All right, and again, for demonstration purposes, I, I'll stop there. So we want to pull the, pull the wool up and lighten it up on the comb a bit. And I will take the coarse tine head. combed top ready to spin and as we look through that you can see all of the VM all of the nips have been removed by the combs and here is your combed top your worsted prep ready to spin there's a blob there we can pinch out and you are ready to spin The next thing I would like to demonstrate is the use of the combs as a hackle. In this case, you can use whichever tines you prefer for whichever types of wool you're processing. You can use the fine, the medium, the, the medium and the coarse, any combination thereof that suits your purpose. And you can use any style of wool. Most of you that are familiar with blending your fibers will already know this but you can you can use the comb to top you can use the prep that came from your combs you can use roving you can use loose locks whatever you prefer whatever your desired outcome is for demonstration purposes we'll go ahead and use what we've combed up here today and this is our alpaca and I'm just gonna unwind my little honey bun here and just start lashing it on. You can use anything to blend your fibers together. Now this is where, for example, if you had a coarse wool that you want to soften up a bit, you can add silk you can combine different fibers, different wools. You can add different colors, blend different colors together. You can blend in your um, sparkle, your Angelina, your Firestar, those types of fibers. Whatever it is you are wanting to accomplish in the end. Variegated and multicolored yarns are made in this fashion. We're just going to build layers. 
Winsleydale, for example, is a coarse wool, and it's typically a bit scratchy. So in that instance, you might want to blend it with some alpaca or some silk or something else to make it softer to the skin. And for demonstration purposes, we'll stop there. Again, pull the fleece up the tines a bit to lighten it up. Pick up your divs and your threader, concave side toward the combs. We'll start at one side and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to work back and forth across the combs, pushing and pulling and removing the fiber. And when you get to the center, don't even worry about it. You just keep on going. Fibers have a lovely way of sticking together all by themselves, making it easy to just work across the combs from one to the next. And that's a quick demonstration of how to blend your fibers and use the combs as a hackle. When your blended fibers are spun, add a little twist here to get an idea of what our blended fibers are going to look like in our finished yarn. Won't that be pretty? So the Pixie Claws Interchangeable Tine Head System has been designed to give you all of the versatility you could possibly need in combing and processing whichever fibers, anything from super fine to very coarse, anything in between in one set of combs. These and other ergonomic Pixie tools can be found at my Etsy shop, Too Twisted. Thank you all very much and happy prepping!